Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista. I paused because I waited for you to point. You oh my goodness. Point. No one can see it. <laughs> I can. I can see it. And the, the two cats that are climbing all over you right now can see it. I'm, I'm concerned about the cats. They have claws. <laughs> How's it going, Brandon? It's hot. <laughs> it is. It is hot. Um, we are recording this in advance, so this is one of those episodes where we're not going to be talking about news or anything like that. It's a, it's a filler episode. Yeah, we're we're traveling. August is super busy for us. Yeah, it's the beginning of August, and I don't know how that happened. I don't and know. And pretty soon it's going to be the end of August. Like, I really don't want to talk about before that. Before you know it, I don't want to talk about that and part. And you're going to be back I, teaching. That's the part this, I didn't want to talk about. The small, the small childrens. They're not actually that small. They're all bigger and, than me. <laughs> and they're they're going to be using their small children slang. <laughs> no, they're they're actually pretty good. They're they're old enough still. <laughs> they're going to be Ohio risen. No, stop it. Uh, and one stuff did, like that. One kid did ask me if you had riz. Uh, ob- obviously, <laughs> so much. <laughs> So much race. <laughs> because I wrote really well, rolled really well mm-hmm. when I was creating my D&D character mm-hmm. and it got a high charisma score because that's where Riz comes from. So there you go. Is that actually where it came from? Yeah, it, Riz is short for charisma. I know, but it's not D&D. It's not well, there. I mean. <laughs> okay, so your D&D character has high Riz. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the fact that I'm talking about D&D means I have no risk. But that, <laughs> although, these days, yeah, D&D's cool. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Uh-huh. Doesn't matter. We're just too old to worry about it anyway. So. I do not care. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about going back to work. Um, but, yeah, in August, I have um, one of my brothers is getting married. And we're going to Disney. And it's just, like, lots of stuff. And you're going back to work. Oh, wait, you said you didn't No, I said I didn't want to talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) Boo hiss. Boo hiss. So today we are going to not do news and not do any of that fun stuff. But I am going to ask you, Brandon, what are you drinking? Oh, just beer. Just beer? Just beer. Oh, that's exciting. It's like a cowboy colch from Calgary, Alberta. You got very Texan when you said that. <laughs> that's how I, when I talk about Calgary, that's how I, that's oh, yeah, how I talk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking water. That's it. Oh, well. Uh, it's kind of boring. We were outside and it was there's, hot. And I there's to water in beer. That's true. That is true. Okay, so let's head to the main topic. Next up on NDR, New Disney Radio, a deep dive. Are you ready for a deep dive? No. I'm well, scared. We're going to do it anyway. We've been watching the Olympics. <laughs> Deep diving true. sounds that's scary. True. It's true. <laughs> we don't have to synchronize it or anything, though. Well, that, that that's good, but <laughs> I'm still slightly concerned for my health. Those 10-meter platforms are very high. Very true. I, I would not be diving off of those. Mm. I might cannonball off of one. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> Pencil dives only. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite Fantasyland attractions. And I actually really like Fantasyland, so I have a few. But this one is special, and it's only in Disneyland now. Yeah, because they got rid of it Mm -hmm. in Florida. Florida. And that is Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. The wildest ride in Fantasyland. Yeah, I was going to say, no, not Wilderness. That's... totally different attraction we don't typically do the big e-ticket attractions in the deep dives no because it's funnier to do yeah. a deep dive on something that's yeah. smaller that people like forget about or is still mostly two-dimensional like mr toads <laughs> it is isn't it? <laughs> yeah oh boy okay are you ready to find out about mr toad it's a good thing that this ride is on the rails because i think this episode's gonna be off <laughs> the rails <laughs> As long as we don't have any head-on collisions with trains, we're okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Deal. When you think Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, what do you think of? Um, pretty much the ending. Yeah. It sticks out in my mind, mm-hmm. but I'm sure we're getting to that. Uh, 
Yeah, pretty pretty much the ending. Yeah, that's that's fair. And drunk driving is that's also fair. Yeah. And what did we learn from that? We learned that the ending happens with the. Yeah, you get the ending from the from the drunk yeah, driving. Exactly. The only acceptable place to drunk drive is a golf course, okay. in your golf cart. Right. And even then, don't be insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah. don't be a jerk, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is an opening day attraction. Yeah, which is kind of weird, but yeah. Well, actually, a few of the Disney dark rides. Um, that are still in existence were opening day attractions, most notably um, Snow White and Peter Pan. Those were both also opening day attractions. Um, however, while those ones have gone through like extensive <laughs> revamping, this one not so much. <laughs> That's because it's like always like on the chopping block. <laughs> it seems I always like. worry about it well, because they've gotten rid of it in Florida, and I think I I honestly think it's like well. Fantasyland's only so big, and if we need a new, a space for a new ride and like a frozen ride or something, I always think it's gonna be that. There's nothing else to take out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people would be very upset if they took this people out, were especially very ups- now. Yes, people were very upset when they took it out of Florida. Mm-hmm. There is an interesting cult following. For, um, you can thank the Disney millennials basically for Mr. Toast. Hey, that's me. Yeah, me too. But what's funny is most of them have never watched the movie it's actually based on. I did once, I think. I've watched it quite a few times, of course. Mm. And that is actually um, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, which I, came out in 1949. And I know you watched Ichabod. I watched Ichabod a yeah, lot. Yeah, Sleepy Hollow. I, I think I had like a bootleg copy that was just Ichabod and then like uh, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kind of. Mm-hmm, like a combo thing? Combo thing. Um not so much the Mr. Toad part. No, see, I definitely watched both of them, although I did watch um, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, like Ichabod part, mm. much more often because they used to play that at Halloween on like the Disney Channel. That's because it's awesome. It, it is so good. I think I should watch that this year. It's been a couple years. But anyway. I'm sure it's on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah, it is, for sure. Mm. Um, unless they took is, it off. But Is it on uh, as a combo? Or yeah. Or is it... Well, it used to be. Yeah. It was on. It was on under as the Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. would. I would like to watch that. So I know this because when we did our decades look, it, it's under the 1940s, and 49. If they don't, they don't have those anymore. Though. No, they don't. But that was when we started doing that. Um, so unless they changed it, but back then that's what it was. Did we ever catch up to the we modern did. era? We, yeah, we did. did yeah, you know? yeah. We well, we finished with the 2010s, of course. But, yeah, yeah, we're almost halfway through the next. I know, day. I know. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Well, uh, and we caught up with Marvel up to Phase Four, and then to the, yeah, <laughs> Phase Three, whatever we were, we finished with. We finished with Endgame. Four, four. Didn't it, didn't we talk about? I think we talked about four. But we've talked about like where we're currently at and what we're looking yeah, forward to I don't as know. well. Beside anyway. the point, we're di- we're diving into Mister Toad. All right, no, I'm Focus. just like I'm just saying Focus. we're caught up with stuff. Um, okay, but in 1949, if you remember back when you were talking about the uh, decades... I remember 1949 like it was <laughs> yesterday. Sunny. <laughs> That's swell. <laughs> but if you remember when you were talking about the decades, during the war years, Disney put a lot of... Um, they, like, they didn't have a lot of money, basically. No, nope, so they would do did. No, it's true. So they would do these combo things. That's how we got things like... Um, Oh, like the three caballeros. Like, they would do all these, like, shorts that put them together. Yeah. And this was part of that whole thing. Yeah. So, Ichabod and Mr. Toad is probably, I think it's the best of all those combo ones. But, what, uh, yeah, so that is what it's based on. And that is loosely based on the book, The Wind in the Willows, Mm -hmm. um, which is by Kenneth Graham and was published in 1908. I actually have a really pretty copy of this. Um, very nice little hardcover one. So the variation of the attraction was an opening day attraction at Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World in 1971, but it closed in 1998, like you talked about. So and the only replaced by Winnie, Winnie the, Pooh. the Pooh, the only existing, which one I now. think it's the same Winnie the Pooh that's in Critter. Country. Yes, or very similar. Very similar. Anyway. Yeah, 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 it's the same basic. Yeah, but. Of the variation in Walt Disney World, I'll actually talk about this now, is quite different than the one that was in Disneyland because there were two different tracks and the two different tracks had very different experiences. Oh. But they both ended in hell. 
That was the only thing they really had. They started and ended in the same way. You spoiled it. That's the ending. You spoiled it. <laughs> I think it's okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. In all versions of this attraction, guests have assumed the role of Mr. Toad, recklessly careening through the English countryside and the streets of London in a period motor car before ultimately meeting demise in a railway tunnel and ending up in a tongue-in-cheek depiction of hell. You know, like a happy family yeah, attraction. Yeah, exactly. Unlike all other fantasy land dark rides, it is not a direct retelling of the film it is based on. He doesn't, like, die in the movie. He does the part where he, like, escapes from prison, uh, or, like, he does the crazy run um, running away from being arrested. Doesn't run into a train. But he does run into a train. Instead, he like gets arrested and thrown. No, I don't want to see that movie anymore. <laughs> uh, it, it it is the uh, that was the habit back then of all the dark rides where you you were the main yeah. character, which conf- <laughs> confused the heck out of people, especially with Snow White. Uh, Snow White, but like even more so, like. As it aged, people got really confused. Yeah. I think I think originally people understood that, and then people got dumber or well, something. I don't know. <laughs> First of all, yes. But second of all, in the original advertisement, it was like, be Snow White and go yeah. on this adventure. They pushed, they pushed yeah. that narrative, yeah. Yeah. Whereas after a while, that didn't happen anymore. Um, now, this is interesting. We've talked before about this. When Walt Disney imagined a lot of these... Fantasyland rides. What did he always want to make them? Walkthroughs, because they were cheap. <laughs> exactly. He didn't want to make this a walkthrough. Well, because you're driving. It's Mr. Toad's wild ride. He had a different idea, though. Oh. His original idea was to make it a roller coaster. Actually, kill the g- guests and ma- send them to hell. Yes, like uh, really immersive experience. Yeah. No, he wanted to make it a roller coaster. Oh. Uh, I. <laughs> I. I have a new wish. If if I <laughs> if I met the genie in real life, we could do an episode of that. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Um, we should totally do that. <laughs> I would wish for like a uh, legit like Mr. Universal Toad. Studios yeah. level. That would be terrifying. Launch no, coaster. It would uh, be a Mr. spinning. Toad. It would be a spinning one. I wouldn't want to do that. A little bit of spin, no, but like no, like no. a launch coaster. Why launch? Because launch coasters are the best. <laughs> <laughs> so. In the movie, and this part is true, you are, um, the idea is Mr. Toad really loves, like, speed and action and excitement. You'd get along with him really well. Yeah, and drinking, apparently. Uh, And that, too. But that's, like, a little... Not driving, though. That's bad. Yes. No, that's, like, a secondary thing. Like, he really, really likes excitement. Mm. And he has inherited Toad Hall, and he just, like, kind of wants to have fun and doesn't really worry about it too much. He's a trust fund Nepo baby. Kind of, yeah. But he and his horse get along, and they go, and they, um... Go all over the countryside, and there's the song, which plays a lot, especially in the queue, and it's Merrily on Our Way to Nowhere in particular, and it's actually a really fun song. It's like... I mean, that's nice, as long as you're not merrily going that way while drunk and, and driving. They're not to begin with. Yeah. Okay. So, he then, though, discovers a motor car, because this is like... The, horseless, the horseless carriage. carriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so he gets very excited about this. So he, he turns gets... his best friend the horse. Well, I mean... Not necessarily. It's more like he... Well, I mean, a little bit, yes. Also, is this not a world of anthropomorphic animals? Yeah. And the horse talks to him. This, But he's still pulling his yeah. carriage? Yeah. So we're he's like to, a slave? We're supposed to believe the horse really likes it. He's like... They have fun. They like... They, they have fun together. We don't don't think about it too hard. I'm thinking about it pretty hard. <laughs> this is a problem because to me. No, because this part isn't in the ride. We're going to focus on the ride. I'm just giving a little bit of background here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the song, Merrily on Our Way to Nowhere in particular, is actually done with the horse. But then he sees a motor car, and he keeps going, a motor car? And he gets, like, a little crazed about it. There was a cartoon where Goofy did that, too. Every time he saw a new car, he got, like, obsessed and went a little crazy, and his eyes went all spirally. And anyway. That does not sound like Goofy at all. (laughs) That sounds like Donald to me. No, it's or, it was Goofy who did this one. Or Scrooge, I suppose. Yeah, but, that's true. Uh, no, it one of the ducks. Anyway, it, it was more about like driving fast made him like that. Anyway, so he gets this car, but he kind of the whole premise of it is he's getting taken for a ride by the. Well, there, there's like a whole series of like not good guys, and one of them is the bartender. They like try and steal Toad Hall from him and his motor car and everything. They kind of set him up. He's a useless 
trust fund Nepo yeah, baby. Yeah, because he's like very And so the gullible. con the con men take advantage of him. Basically. Yeah, okay. So in 1955, it opens that way, although the final scene was not from the book and was not from the movie or, like, the cartoon or anything like that. It was just completely reinvented, and it was kind of like teach you not to drive recklessly and definitely not. I mean, that's a good lesson. That is true. That's, so it's one of the most dangerous things we do. <laughs> that is true. Oh, so, okay. Um, it contained, it was the simplest of all the dark rides at opening day. It still is, yeah. It was the shortest in length. It was 98 seconds. It probably still is, yeah. Yeah, it, it probably still is Pinocchio the is pretty short, too, but. Um, yeah, that's true. The, everything in 1955 when it opened was supposed to be more like medieval tournament tents kind of things. The cool oh. facade is not like it was then. So that was 1955. I, I like the facade. It's one of my... I do, too. It's beautiful. One of, one of my preferred facades. It is supposed to be Toad Hall. Yeah. It yeah. looks It looks like a, like a kind of like a manor house, which is impressive because it's just... It's Fantasyland is small and cramped and yeah, stuff they, like they that. Yeah, they do well, do, though. They do well, yeah. In 1961, it went, um, it went under like a minor refurbishment. It got some new gags, some scene details, um, more of the like anthropomorphic animals like moly mcbadger and things like that were inserted into it and then it got the new version in 1983 when a uh, fantasy landed the whole big overhaul that I was re- in i remember it like it you was were not yesterday. even alive then, so don't I even <laughs> no but my favorite thing is the mural in um at the back it has it shows the adventures of toad and his motor car and it has a hidden reference to walt disney the train is named W.E.D. Rail. Hmm. But yes, other than that, um, the 1983 version is basically what we have now. They, it could use some updates. It still has a lot of the... It's still really well known for having the flat details. Flat. Yeah. All the... There's no... There's no animatronics. Mm-hmm. It's all a little cardboard cutout. <laughs> I know, I get they're wood. They're not actually cardboard, but it feels like it's cardboard. It, it feels very like traveling carnival yeah, like you, you, or the closest to it, like still way better than that. Well, but, you know, like, yes. But um, if you're gonna point at something in the park and be like, "What is behind you?" But it is one of the more thrilling. It has good twists and turns. That, you are very twisty in it, uh, yeah. which is fun. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, it's a dark ride. Whatever. Yeah. Um, some small changes were made. Um, the fireplace used to be a projection on smoke, but now there's like a door crashing. They basically were like, we're just going to embrace all the crashing and the chaos and go for it. Chaos. Exactly. I like, I like chaos. Right? So you said Magic Kingdoms was there and then it closed. There were like protests Protest? yeah. about this. So mm-hmm. in October, 1997, rumors... Um, began to spread that an attraction based on Winnie the Pooh would replace Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. On August 27, 1998, Walt Disney World officially announced the closure of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. The attraction closed on September 7th um, to make room for the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which is this, like basically the same one that we have now. Tributes to... And that opened in June 4th, 1999. Tributes to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride can be that found... That was almost 30 years ago, by the oh way. Oh, my... Ow. <laughs> it's true, Belle. Oh, that's funny. That hurts. Why would you do it? Um, tributes to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, though, can be found in the attraction. I just wanted to reference what these are. There are paintings of both Mr. Toad and Moly. And in addition, there's a statue of Mr. Toad in the pet cemetery outside the Haunted Mansion. In Walt Disney World. In Walt Disney World. Yeah, in Li- which is in Liberty Square. If you're that, makes, that makes... Which I like, because it's the pet really, cemetery, that's right? That's really yeah. cool, yeah. You can also find a reference to Mr. Toad in Disneyland in Storybook Canal. Um, there's... Uh, they have a Mr. Toad's Hall. They have the Toad Hall there. Mm. And as you pass, pass by, the narrator, or the captain of the boat, I guess, says that they're on their way to Merrily. They're Merrily on their way to Nowhere in Particular, which is the song that opens with that. I, I don't know. What is... What is, like, because you have the skipper on the Jungle yeah. Cruise. What is the captain Ooh, of... the cast member that's called there. I, this, yeah. I know this is a tangent, but... Uh, I don't... I, I think narrator. I like narrator, because you're like... It's she is story, a narrator, though. Storybook or, canal. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's kind of cool. You know I'm looking this up now. Oh. <laughs> I was more asking it rhetorically... 
that this is that is one of my favorites again tangent storybook land is um one of the last things where females were not allowed to be the narrator slash skipper slash whatever they're called why oh because you actually had to physically move the boats and they were worried if they didn't want to like like with a pole or I, I don't know i just know they had to physically move the boats and that was why well, I, they still have to kind of push off a they, little they bit. do but um they, they've like changed the engine in them now and stuff so they're lighter yeah 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 I'm pretty sure they could have probably handled it. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. But yes, Toad Hall and Molly is the neighbor, um, and they are found in Storybook Land, and that's the other only other place you can really find them. Which is again interesting because I'm pretty sure most people do not know this movie at all. Yeah. Well. It's kind of one of those under the radar yeah. Disney history things. But of course, the Disneyland park being open in 1955, and they started work on it in 1953, and this movie came out in 1949. It would have been fairly timely. It's more known as the ride now, though, than anything. Yes, 100%. Obviously. Totally. It's it, on, according to Wikipedia, the cast member is a costumed guide. Let's call them narrators. I'm going to go with narrator. Yeah, nah, I like it. Nah, narrator. Um, different ride, though. <laughs> this is your basic dark ride. You load onto the little motor car. I recommend not riding a, it at nighttime. Yeah, nighttime's good. Um, leg room, not much. Minimal, if any. Uh, if if you're a large individual like myself, uh, leg. if you have lots of legs... Go in the back seat. <laughs> yes, they usually tell you that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's actually true for all of the ones there. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, the motor cars are named after, like, their toady. Most of them, actually. <laughs> like, yeah, no, there's different characters, like mm-hmm. Mr. Rat and yeah. Mr. Toad and mm-hmm. Mr. Molly, Mol- Molly or whatever. <laughs> Mr. Toad's car is the best. And we've, of course. We've ridden we have. in it. A couple of times, at least. Yeah, Yeah, and then one thing I do want to mention is, um, I've talked about this before, actually, the opening day attractions, during the 50th anniversary, they would paint one vehicle gold for it, for the the golden anniversary. So, of course, there was a gold motor car. And was that that with Mr. Toad? I believe it was, yeah. (laughs) I believe it was, yeah. So, anyway, I really like Mr. Toad. Pretty it's soon we're going to have, like, the 75th anniversary, Ooh. and they'll have to paint them diamond or something. Well, they're getting prepped for the 70th, so who knows what they're going to do about that. Yeah, that's that's what I mean by pretty soon, like, literally in five years. Yep. Um, oh, boy. The only other really thing, like, you talked about the facade, the exterior, so it still kind of look like Toad Hall. It's like a manor kind of style. Mm-hmm. This is one of the things that like has... Like a Tudor, Tudor yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the things that has the vehicle out front where you can take pictures. Which is great because it's, it. it's a cool vehicle. Yeah. And, yeah. The other things that do that, um, you can do that with the teacup and, and Dumbo. Dumbo. Dumbo yeah. yeah, so this is really the other thing for that. I highly recommend for Dapper Day. <laughs> and uh, not in front of the ride, but there is a Autopia vehicle in Disneyland Hotel. Yes, that is true. Yeah, you can just go for a little walk and find it. You don't even need a reservation or a ticket to the park to get that one. That's true, yeah. <laughs> It does say that Mr. Toad's Wild Ride may close to accommodate fireworks performances. I don't know if that is true or not, but of course they have it on their official website that it could happen. Part of Fantasyland, I think, is closed. Yeah, it might. Yeah. I don't, I, honestly, I have no idea. No, I don't know either. I, I just thought all of Fantasyland closed. I don't think all of it does. I've been on Storybook Land Canal during fireworks. Yeah, but did you get on before it closed? Mm, I don't know. It's been a long time. Inter- it just says May, though, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yes, instead of road rage, they say that you have toad rage. Toad rage. <laughs> now, you know what? I need a, uh intercompany buddy comedy yeah. with Mr. Toad mm-hmm. and Toad from Mario. Oh, my goodness. Uh, going on a road trip together. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. Like Roger Rabbit is the only time that like Warner Brothers, Mm -hmm. Looney Tunes and, uh, 
Disney characters appeared in the same film mm-hmm. together. I think I think we could do it. We could do it again. I I'm probably here for it. not. I'm no. I'm here for it. Probably not. I'm here though. for it. Um, you mentioned the back seat. I think Mr. Toads is the only one that only has one row. I thought it okay, maybe. I think so. I'm kind of looking at pictures and stuff. Maybe here. you're maybe you're right. I yeah. might be confused with. Uh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Snow White is the one you were thinking of. Uh, Snow or White Pinocchio. or Pinocchio. I They're think very I, I similar. Think, I think yeah. I was thinking of Pinocchio. Yeah. But, uh, so that is one thing that makes it difficult if you're like a family or something going. You kind of have there's to. There's only the split two seats. Up. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe you could have two adults and a small child. Super small, as long as you're both small. Like, I went with my mom and sister. We're three adults, and we just did two cars. Obviously. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. so anyway, that is um, kind of something un- unique about it, too, but that is a consideration. Yeah. Do you know why Walt did not make it a roller coaster? Uh, probably cash money. He didn't think that it would be appropriate for elderly or young children. He wanted it to hit as many people as possible. They didn't really probably do thrill also, rides at the time. Yeah, I know. And they... They've taken that lesson way too much to heart. It wasn't until like the 80s, well, the 70s, 80s. When did, when they, did they build Matterhorn? Um, they did that in the 60s, and that was the first yeah. one. Yeah. So that's that's a thrill ride, and that actually pushed forward thrill ride technology. Well, it, and that is pretty much the last time that Disney was on the forefront of thrill rides. But. <laughs> oh, sorry. It opened in 1959, not 1960. Okay, sorry. so... Matter, Matterhorn was thrilling. Mm-hmm. Was he not concerned about the olds and the youngs then? He, he actually was, yes. Uh, well. <laughs> but he thought he could do one. We're, we're almost 40 and, and it hurts my bones. <laughs> I love it, though. It is great. But... <laughs> um, my favorite is seeing the people in their, like, 1950s garb and early 60s oh, garb. On Dapper garb Day. On, like, well, on Dapper Day, but actually, like, on opening day. On though. opening yeah, day. Yeah, because yeah. you can see, yeah, the, the footage and yeah. stuff of that. Mm. Opening day of Matterhorn now. not mm. Obviously, it wasn't mm. open then, but yeah. I don't know. Autopia didn't have, like, a track or anything. That would have been terrifying. <laughs> that would have been pretty Yeah, thrilling. people <laughs> literally turned around and went the wrong way, mm-hmm. and that's why there's now a track. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and, they, and they had those phantom boats that people would just drive all over. Oh, yeah, exactly. So they've done thrilling things without meaning to do thrilling things. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually Bad kind scary. of thrilling. <laughs> I just... Did, did build more coasters. Uh, Mr. So he, T- Mr. Toad Coaster, let's go. But it, it is a pretty thrilling dark ride because you do go to hell. We, I really liked going there, not to hell, going on to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride after Splash Mountain in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> when Splash Mountain We was did open. that on purpose to yeah. try and dry out a little bit. It didn't. It helped a little it bit. It helped a little but bit. Like, yeah. they, they, do pump, they do pump the heat in yeah. there. Like it's, it's, we also rode it when it was raining a lot, and I rode it with my mom and sister when it was raining a lot. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not so nice in the summertime when it's. No, no that's much less so. <laughs> 30 degrees, like 85 Fahrenheit. Not, not, not as nice. Not quite the yeah. same. Maybe that's why they got rid of it in Florida. Maybe. I. This one does have a soft spot, though, and. I think if you are at all interested in riding it, please go ride it. That's the only way it stays there. I do think it is the one that is perpetually on the chopping block. Yes, but it's almost achieved like cult status where they I think so. Where they won't get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Like kinda not quite the same, but like they'll never get rid of Small World even though it's actually like I love Small objectively World. Objectively a terrible no, ride. No, it is not. Small World is amazing. Small World is iconic. It, it's objectively no a it is not ride. it's iconic and wonderful <laughs> it's iconic that's why it's yeah. staying but it's objectively and a wonderful. terrible terrible and ride. important to like the history of disney yeah okay anyway <laughs> i think it may be safe because it's only in disneyland opening day attraction and has like a little cult following i mean it's safe for now i also think it's problematic that it's the only thing they've never updated they should update it they should Get a uh, full devil judge a- animatronic. <laughs> yeah. But you don't like the plywood guy? With fire breathing. Oh, wait, no, they, no, don't, they, like, they don't like doing that no. anymore since uh, <laughs> since the dragon. <laughs> Fantastic. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Um, but the fact that they've never updated it is why I think it's always, I'm always worried about it being on the chopping block for that. Anyway, we should watch Mr. Toad. Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Okay. <laughs> At some point. Tonight? Probably not. Dang it.
So that's our show this week. Thank you, Emil, who's responsible for the custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website at disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. That's also where you can find a link to our social media accounts and our email. You can find Disney A episodes on all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms. And if you've rated or reviewed our podcast, thank you. If you haven't yet, please do. It just takes like half a second. You just like click the little stars. You don't even really have to make a comment if you don't want to. Although, if you do, that's extra awesome. Sounds easy to me. I don't know. Yeah. If you know someone who might like listening to us, be sure to recommend Disney A to them. So I'm Krista. I'm Brandon. And until the next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney A. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon.